If you live in the inland region, then you are aware of one of the area's top Latino-owned businesses, Cardenas Markets. As they get close to opening up their 21st grocery store, I was surprised to learn that for over three years, the family had been quietly building another enterprise, Del Real Foods. Hispanic Lifestyle had the rare and exclusive opportunity to sit down with two Cardenas family members, Jesus Jr. and Jose, where they shared a little of the family's history and their new business venture. Our conversation began with Jesus Jr. setting the record straight on the company's milestones. Actually, we're celebrating our 25-year anniversary at our first store. That would be just with the grocery store. Just with the, just store with the grocery store, but at, at our ranch, and you know, we, we were doing 80 to 90 hogs a week that we were slaughtering there. Uh, we were going back when we were 9, 10 years old. I mean, 11, we started, you know, and that's where we got started cutting and, you know, uh, you know butchering and stuff. It was, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty, you know, pretty fair sized little, you know, farm that we had. And, and we, we got it up to that level to where we, um, we were able to, uh, to, um, we actually had a little shop in the back uh, where we would, uh, some of the beef that we would slaughter there, we would sell by the pound, we, you know, pork and, and different. I, our mother would also do <coughs> chorizo. She was, uh, she was... She was probably doing about 500 pounds of chorizo a, a day by hand. By uh, herself, by hand. And my father wanted to, wanted a store and not necessarily just a slaughterhouse or raising the animals anymore. So he, uh, he ended up getting into a small partnership with, a couple, with a, two brothers and a friend. Uh, got a couple of very small stores, one in Anaheim, one in Santa Ana, it didn't go very well. And then we got our own store a few years later uh, in Ontario, California, which was the first store. Shortly thereafter, we saw the need for, for the food side of it too, which my mother's an incredible cook, very good with all the day-to-day -day home stuff and the rice, the, the beans, the, all that stuff. And my father was always a little bit more on the traditional stuff, the, the stuff you only get on the Christmas or the birthday parties or the barbacoas, the carnitas, the outdoor type stuff. Excellent cooks, both of them. And um, that's where we got into the food side of it. Uh, actually, Chuy is a, a phenomenal cook in all, in all those areas. Um, and that's how we got into the food side of it more than anything else through our parents. And at that point, we kind of all, uh, we were working in different stores. So. She was working in one, I was in another, my sister was in another, uh, my younger brother um, was working also at another, and um, it was probably about 10, 12 years ago, I think, we just decided to, to put all that together. We, running things differently was, was very difficult, you know, every store had its own set of rules and its, its own processes, so we decided we, we would put a... Uh, bring everything under one office and bring transportation under one office, bring purchasing under one office. Um, and it was a mess at first, it was a disaster, you know, like most things. The Cardenas family has expanded its operations to include a line of food products. I asked about the challenge of starting this new business venture. It actually came from uh, from Cardenas Markets. Uh, we. We, th we had good food in several locations, but we wanted consistency. And that's, that's what we were looking for more than anything else with the consistency. So we figured, let's put a small little commissary together, a little processing plant to be able to make those foods for the rest of the stores and in hopes that we could get the same flavors at all the locations because we would get customers as well as ourselves. You know, we like this plate better at this store than we do at that store. So um, that's pretty much what started the plant. We, we figured we'll, we'll do that, and we did. We started to make food for the stores, um, which, uh, you know, it was, of course, a whole new thing about learning how to make foods without having them lose their flavors and things like that and being able to send them to the stores. Uh, but, sh yeah, shortly after we started with um, processing foods for the stores, we thought it might be a good idea that we could supply some of the guys that did the same thing as we did. They had grocery stores, they had food in their stores. And so we, we uh, got into some of the food shows with uh, some of the suppliers like Cisco Foods and Comida Latina in, in, in LA. And um, uh, we started to, to sell it as a food service type item. Um, shortly thereafter, we, we uh, were actually in that show. We, um, 
we ran into um, some of the people from Costco Foods, which you know, um, liked the food product and um, kind of gave us the, the, the opportunity to produce some of the foods for them under the Del Real label. Um, we had already had some for our stores, smaller packages that were uh, the regular retail size that we sell here, and the value size is the size that we started to produce for, uh, for Costco. And uh, actually did very well. We did very well. The, the food was accepted very well by, by all the consumers at Costco. From the beginning, I mean, it was, it was very tough for us to put a team together at the beginning to, to really be able to, to, um, to be able to come up with, uh, you know, your dollars were very minimal and you had to kind of prove yourself to a point too. So, so it was very tough for us. I mean, we were run, running with just a few people to really try to figure out a lot of the, you know, the processes in, in before you could really take that next step.